Hello guys, welcome to Hankins Custom Rifles and another episode of Hanks TV. It's a nice Sunday afternoon here in Kentucky on August the 27th and we're going to do a little bit of test firing today and we're going to do a gun that's a little different than I normally test fire but I've been building a lot of these lately and I wanted to get one out to the range and do some shooting with it. I built a bunch of these last fall and I think I might have done a test fire on one but I'm not 100% sure. I know I did one on an Apex and maybe one on a H&R uh, handy rifle, but I don't know for sure that I've done one on these guns yet, but we're going to do it. And what this is, it's a Thompson Center Pro Hunter frame that's got a Brooks barrel on here. It's 45 caliber muzzle loader. It's a Brooks barrel, 1 in 20 twist, and it's got a lug that's been welded and machined and all that work was done by MGM barrels. So what we're going to do is we're going to test fire this gun today and just see what we can get out of it. I haven't shot it yet. I started sizing some bullets and I've got some that I think are gonna fit just about right. I've got one that's really loose that's just gonna fall down the barrel. We're gonna use that for the first shot just to try to get us on paper. Now, these guns are not as easy to bore sight as a bolt action rifle because on a bolt action, you can take the bolt out, pull the breech plug, look through there, center everything up down range, adjust the scopes to be on your target and you'll pretty much hit your board at 100 yards. This scope we just took right straight out of the box, mounted it on the gun. I've got a target at 25 yards, and we're going to shoot that 25-yard target first to see where we're at and try to get on paper and adjust close to the bullseye, and then we're going to move down to 100 yards. But hopefully we'll hit that paper at 25 yards with the first shot, or at least I'll be able to tell where the bullet went. And... You could bore sight one of these guns, but it would be a lot harder to do. You'd have to break it down, support it in a couple different places. And to me, I think it's just going to be easier for us to do it this way today. Um, I'll run over the gun just a little bit here. It's got a Revolution stock on it, and I get these from the House of Arms. Marty out there is a super great guy. He always takes care of me, super fast shipping. Um, he keeps a lot of stuff in stock, so when you call Marty, he's usually got what you need and gets it right out the door. So this is a laminated wood. This is the, uh, the camo version, I believe is what they're calling this. It's uh, black, green, and brown. It's a good looking color. We've got my standard muzzle brake on. I make these in my shop and um, four ports. It's a shorter brake than a lot of them and that helps with the ramrod keeps a shorter funnel stem. It's still very effective. It is bored out to a half an inch so that we can allow for this funnel to slide in. You can load through the funnel, dump your gunpowder through the funnel, put the bullet through the funnel, do everything with the funnel in there, and then you pull it out when you're done. Now there's one guy out there that says that these brakes are overboard and there's a better way to do it. And there is other ways, whether they're any better or not, I don't know. Um, there's some guys that are boring these brakes to what would be the correct size, which would be uh, about 478 instead of uh, 500. And they're making this funnel stem to where when you put the bullet in it, you have to pull the funnel out to put the bullet in. You push the bullet into the funnel stem and you push it in there and it'll kind of stay, kind of stay. So then you got to take and push your funnel back in with your bullet in the stem. A lot of guys are using these for full forming because they can push that in there. They can turn that bullet around until it lines up with the grooves of the barrel. Kind of like lining up spline shafting. If any of you guys have ever done any mechanical work, you're putting a rear end in or a transmission, you got to get that spline shaft lined up in order for it to all go in there. Now, when I designed my funnel system, I designed it to be easy, simple, and reliable, and work every time, and it does. The drawback I see to the other system, and it's not that it took somebody smarter to figure it out, which is what he likes to say, but the drawback to the other system is, if you're dropping a bullet in here, and it comes out of your funnel, you're turning it, it's not lined up just right, it comes out of your funnel. Eventually, you're going to have to turn your gun upside down, maybe, and shake this bullet out. Well, when you shake the bullet out, you're going to shake all your gunpowder out. So, there's many, many different ways of doing things, but 
this is the way I do it and it works and it works every time so we'll move on we got past that funnel so we're going to move down here we'll talk about the scope a little bit this is a vortex scope it's their new scopes they've come out with here within the last year I've sold a couple of these but this is the first one I've actually sighted in and shot with or looked through they call this the Razor HD and it's got a one inch tube on it. It's a three to 15 power with a 42 millimeter objective. Comes with a nice little sunshade that you can screw off if you don't want to use it. If you're hunting in the woods or low light, you can take your sunshade off. If you're out in the field or something, you got sun coming down in front of you, these sunshades make it really nice to block a lot of the, uh, the glare. I've already looked through the scope. I've played around with it. I focused it at 25 yards. The lenses are super clean. They're crystal clear, got really nice glass, and so far I'm going to have to tell you that I really I like the scope so far. The nice thing about Vortex rifle scopes, or Vortex scopes, or products at all, any of Vortex products, and I'm a big supporter of Vortex. I think for the money you can't go wrong if, if you don't want to spend two grand for a Night Force or one of the upper, upper end scopes. The Vortex is, to me, the best deal on the market. So, and they tell you right here, we promise to repair, replace any damage item over the life of your product. Absolutely free. So, I don't know how you can go wrong with a guarantee like that. And out of all the scopes that I have sold for Vortex, I've never had to send one back. Never had one break. I've read where a few guys have had problems with them. But, I mean, when you sell thousands and thousands and thousands of items... Eventually, you're going to have one or two that didn't make it through quality control or somebody that built it on a Friday was in a hurry to get off work or he had a bad day, got in a fight with his wife or whatever, you know. So there's always going to be something. And you never hear about all the good ones. You only hear about the bad ones. You can build 500 of these rifles, and if you build one bad one and send it to a guy in North Carolina, he's going to just rip you a new rear end every chance he gets for the rest of his life dedicate a website to Hankins custom rifle slander but anyway that's some people do that that's what they get off on and that's okay with me we just keep on moving along so um, let's see this gun was com a, a complete package. The guy that bought this don't have any muzzle loading equipment, nothing. He's brand new to smokeless muzzle loading. He's a reloader. He's a shooter. He's intelligent. He knows about shooting guns and reloading, so I'm pretty sure he's going to be able to grasp this pretty good. But what he bought for me was pretty much a total package. We've got the gun, the frame, the stock, I put the scope on it, I'm going to sight it in, mount, I mounted the scope, I'm going to sight it in for him. He ordered a three-piece ramrod, which any of you guys that know how these rods work, they're really nice. You can fold them up, keep them in your pocket, and whenever you need it, you just pull it out and now you've got your ramrod. It's got a jag on it, custom made to fit Pittman and Parker long nose bullets, the real long high BC bullets that are on the market, this jag will fit it. It'll also work with any other bullets. And today we're going to be shooting the Parker 275 grain BEs. But you can load Hornady bullets with them. You can load whatever you want to. And this jag will work. Um, now I'm going to tell you guys that the little sweat bees down here today are just absolutely terrible. It's about the worst I've ever seen them. They're getting on my nerves a little bit. Okay, so we've got the, the three-piece ramrod. That's really, really nice. You can buy these off my website. Call me, and I can get you one headed your way. The muzzle brake will come off if he wants to hunt in a ground blind or he's got somebody in a tree stand or something there. If he just don't want to use the muzzle brake while he's hunting, you take the muzzle brake off, you screw on this thread protector. That's included with the muzzle brakes. Whenever I build a brake and put it on for a guy, it's included. You want to ask your rifle smith out there when you ask him how much to put on a muzzle brake and he says well 100 bucks well then you got to ask him does it come with a thread protector does it come with a powder funnel and does that include the price of the muzzle brake and then they always oh no they don't do that you know we still got to buy the brake that's another 50 bucks i got to make a funnel got to put a thread protector on 
by the time you're done, you're up or your prices are more expensive than what I charge to put the brake on, make the funnel. It's all done at the same time. So uh, let's keep moving on here. The guy got a decapping stand. That's for putting in your little primer modules after you have fired them while you're sitting out on your, your shooting bench. He bought one of these little hammers that I make that fits in your possibles box or your bag or you know you can carry it in your back pocket or the door pocket on your truck or whatever and he bought this little sterret punch now i sell this as a kit the hammer decap and stand and a punch and this is a sterret punch top line high quality it's not one of these little um soft metal punches that some people provide with their decap and stands and you basically just put that in there hit it with the hammer knocks out the primer my decapping stands are bored all the way through. They got a big pocket on the bottom of them. I know there's another guy who sells these things. There's no pocket. There's no hole all the way through it. You can only knock out one or two primers and you got to dump this out and then you got to knock another one and then you got to dump this out. You can knock out all 25 of your primers with this. Take and slide it off the table. Throw the primers on the ground. Won't hurt nothing. And you're good to go. You can just keep right on moving. So not all products are created the same they're not all manufactured and they're not all copied exactly and they're not all equal everybody has their own ideas of how to do something and what really works so now what we're going to do i'm going to move some of this stuff here off the table so we can start shooting this gun we're going to start out at 25 yards i've got a really loose fitting bullet and I believe it's this one if I haven't mixed them up. I sized five of them. And I believe that it's this bullet. I'm going to check it to make sure. Yep, this bullet here will probably just fall all the way down the barrel. We probably won't even need a ramrod on it. And years ago when I introduced this ignition system and I was shooting bullets that didn't hardly use any pressure to go down the barrel. Um, several guys over on Doug's message board said I was crazy, said I was lying, said it couldn't happen, it's impossible. They've been shooting these guns for many, many years, and you got to hammer the bullets down, you got to have tight fit and all that stuff. And I proved them wrong, and now, years later, all those same guys that said it wouldn't work, they're doing it. So, what we're going to do is just do a simple load. We're shooting 65 grains of IMR4198 in this conversion today. We call this a conversion. It's actually a muzzle loader. It's not a conversion. It's never been anything other than a muzzle loader, so I really haven't converted it. It's just a 45 caliber Brooks barrel with my breech plug in it. Now, watch this, fellas. I didn't even push that ramrod. That's how loose that bullet fits. I'm just going to make sure it stays down. I'm going to put a primer on. And now we are ready to cock the hammer and shoot the gun. But now I've got two dogs down here. I'm going to have to take a break. We're going to take my dogs over and put them in the cab of my truck because I've tried and tried and tried, but I cannot get them to wear earplugs. So we're going to put them away, and I'll get back with you guys here in just a second. Okay, guys, we're ready. We've got the dogs put away. We've got the gun loaded. Um, everything seems to be ready to rock and roll here. Just got to pull the hammer back. Put my earplugs in. Like I said earlier, we're shooting at 25 yards first just to get us on paper. Sometimes if you shoot at 100, you don't even hit your paper or your backboard or nothing, and you're just wasting bullets. So we'll throw a few down range at 25 yards and just work our way back.
Okay, now remember that was that super light fitting bullet. It just fell down the barrel. We're up, we're dead straight in line, but we're about two inches low. So I'm gonna bring it up. Let's go ahead and bring it up about We'll bring it up six minutes. I don't know what that's going to equal at 25 yards, but um, that'll probably get us on now at 100. We're at least straight in line with it. I'm going to load it up again. We'll shoot another one at 25 yards. Let's see how this bullet's going to fit in the bore. It might be tight. I may have to do some adjustments on the sizing die. The more we shoot this gun, the tighter we may have to set these bullets. But we'll see how things progress as we shoot this a couple times. You see, that's that's pretty tight on that one. <clears throat> Way too tight, fellas. Okay, we got it down, but that's way tighter than it needs to be. And I will um, keep working on these bullets until we get a better fit. Now, with my system, with the large rifle magnum primer system and these little modules, once you get used to this gun, you can hold it with one hand, crack it open, and it'll kick this module out in your hand. You can catch it as long as you put your hand right here it'll just pop it right out. So we're ready to put on a new module. Just set that in front right there. Close it up. We'll shoot one more at 25 yards and then we're just gonna move on out to 100. Okay, just so that you guys know it, six minutes on the scope moved us three inches roughly at 25 yards. So now we're going to take a break. I'm going to carry a target down, put it on at 100 yards, and I'll get right back with you guys here in a second. Okay, guys, we're ready now to shoot 100 yards. I tightened the sizing die up about a half a notch, and I ran this bullet through it. So let's see what we're at with, the, with that bullet. As long as we can get it down, we'll go ahead and shoot it. And if it's tight, we'll make another half a notch adjustment on the sizing die until we get these bullets to fit the way we like them to fit. And this is probably the best way to do it. Size them at the range one or two at a time. And once you get your barrel fouled, and size the bullets to your foul barrel, that's usually the best way to do it. <clears throat> I don't know to, for sure that we made any difference. Okay, we got that one down, but it was tight. I think it was tighter than the last one, and that's because even though we went a little smaller on the bullet, the barrel got a little fouling in it. The more fouling you get, 
small you're going to have to go with your bullet. For a hunting gun, something you're going to stick in the woods, get on tree stands, you know, 300 yards is probably a good, honest, realistic distance that you could shoot this gun at. Could you kill a deer at 450? Yeah, you probably could, but your drop is going to be so much by the time it gets that far that if you miscalculate your yardage any at all, you're going to miss the deer because by the time it gets that far, it's going to be dropping pretty fast. So now this is the first shot for 100 yards. I've adjusted the scope. I've set my focus. We're on 15 power now. We're going to move on out to 100 and see what we can get. Okay, I'm not sure, but I think we're just a little bit low out there. I'll probably have to walk out and look. And if we need to make adjustments, we will. So I'll be back up here in just a few minutes. Okay, guys, what I thought I was seeing was a bullet hole, but it wasn't a bullet hole. I walked down there and I did find the bullet hole. It's about four and a half inches high and two inches or so to the left. I've already made some scope adjustments. I got back to where I think we should be at the bullseye this next time or pretty close. And we weren't as far off with the scope mounting as I thought we was gonna be at 100 yards because I'm right back now I'm at, the scope was on zero when we started and I'm at one and a half MOA off of the zero mark where the factory settings were from Vortex. So we're gonna load it up again. I've sized another bullet. I went one more notch tighter on the die. See if this one will go down any easier. There we go. That's about where I like them. One hand, you don't get red faced and out of breath by the time you get your bullet in. I missed that one. Okay, so we're going to try another shot at 100 yards. Okay, I see it down there, and we're going to shoot another one. I'm going to size this bullet.
Okay, and we're going to shoot another one. You get another bullet. I'll get a couple bullets and go ahead and set them out. I'm going to continue, though, to size these one at a time until I'm sure that that's where I want my die to be set. A couple of powder charges. Go ahead and shoot one more at a hundred for a three shot group. Okay, we've got two in the same hole. One's down about a three-quarter of an inch. So we've got a decent group going, but we're still a little bit low. So I'm going to make another scope adjustment. I want to bring that group up about two inches. Actually, I'm going to bring it up an inch and a quarter. I'm going to bring it to the left. Make sure I'm moving this the right way. Okay, we'll bring it to the left. About an inch. All right, so we're going to take a five minute break. We'll shoot another group at 100 yards and see what we get. Okay, guys, we're ready to shoot another group. I put up a new target at 100 yards, gave us a new orange dot to shoot at, and took a 5 or 10 minute break. It's warming up out here today, but it's still a pretty day. I went ahead and sized these three bullets so we can just load and shoot three bullets the trigger pull on this encore is pretty tight this is just a factory Encore action hasn't had a trigger job or nothing done to it. It's a pretty hard trigger pull. I'd say it's at least six or seven pounds. So we're going to shoot another group at the bottom target. See what we can get.
Okay guys, we got all three of those in the exact same hole. I'm going to say we've got less than a three quarter inch group down there, but they're still low. They're about exactly the same height as the, the first group was, and I did make an adjustment on the scope, so I don't know what's going on here, but I'm going to bring them up a little bit more. Maybe I just didn't come up enough, but I thought I would have that would have been enough. We're going to take another break. We're going to shoot another group here in a minute and see what we get. Okay, guys, we're going to shoot another group. I'm going to shoot at the same bottom target. Hopefully, this group is going to move up some. I've got a really good group down there now with the first three shots that I shot at the bottom target. Before I shoot, I'm going to move two clicks to the right. That would hopefully put this group on the bullseye.
Okay, we got another great group down there. It's another one holer. I'm still just a little bit low from where I would like to be. I'm just going to change the elevation two clicks and we're going to call that probably done. So we'll take another break, let the barrel cool down. I've got two more primer modules and I've got some more bullets. So we'll probably shoot two more shots and we'll call this rifle complete. Okay guys, we've shot enough at 100 yards. The gun is shooting really, really good. We got some really good groups. I just texted my buddy Kyle Pittman and asked him to send me some data real quick, some drop data for the bullet drops out to 444 yards. Now I got a couple bullets left. We're just gonna play around, have a little bit of fun if we hit it we hit it if we miss it we miss it but what we're going to do we're going to go from 100 to 200 so i'm going to load the gun up i'm going to make the adjustment on the scope for 200 yards we're going to shoot at this big gong we'll shoot the big one it's a 12 inch square gong and we'll just see if we can ring it it would be the best thing to do would be to verify all this drop data before you went out and, you know, I wouldn't recommend doing this to deer hunt with or something, but just for today, we're having fun. Let's see how far out we can get by using the computer generated drop data. Now, if you can see the big gong down there on the right-hand side, that's the one I'll be shooting at. According to the drop data on the computer here, I need two and a half minutes. So we're going to dial up two and a half minutes and make our shot. Okay, that drop data was good for 200 yards. We're right on the gong. I can see the uh, impact. Elevation was perfect. Windage, it's a little bit to the right on windage. So we're gonna move on out to the next gong that I can see. And that one will be 250 yards. It's to the to the left of that target and you can barely see it and once you zoom in on it you'll be able to see it a little better According to the drop data for 250 yards, we need four and a quarter minutes. So let's go to 4.25 and make a shot. I missed it at 250 yards, so we're going to try it again just to see why we missed it. And this is the last shot I've got, fellas, so we're going to give it all we got. Computer generated data, sometimes it gets you close. I couldn't tell for sure where I 
where it hit at. So we're just going to do the same thing. I might hold a little high. You guys might be able to see where it's hitting that in the in the uh, video camera during the, when we watch it, but I can't tell. Okay guys, I hit it on the second shot and I aimed, I put my crosshairs just about an inch down on the top of that gong. So our first shot must have went under it. We needed to come up just a little bit. So the drop data gets us close. You know, I don't know what Kyle figured in there for BC and all that. Where velocity might be a little off. We figured it at 2,600 feet per second. So best thing you can do is just come to the range and verify all this information before you go hunting. But we know this is a good 250 yard deer killer, probably 300. I'm confident we can kill deer pretty easy at 300 once you know your drop data and figure out the BC and do your homework. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna run down, or should I say we're gonna walk down to the 100 yard target, show you these groups we shot with this gun today and we'll be wrapping up the video. So we'll be right back here in just a minute. Okay guys, we've made it down here to the 100 yard target. And as you can see, we've got some pretty good groups out of this gun. We did start out shooting at 25 yards. We moved to 100. My first shot was right here. I made a scope adjustment, brought it down here. Made another scope adjustment, shot this group right here. That's our best three shot group of the day. That's less than a half an inch for three shots out of a muzzle loader. I made another adjustment, brought them up. We shot three shots right here, which is still low. I made a few clicks up on the scope, set everything back to zeros, and then we just took a few fun shots at 200 and 250 yards. We hit the gong at 200 on the first shot. The second shot we missed at the second 250 yard gong we missed with our first shot and then the second shot we was able to dial back in and aimed a little higher we hit the gong so definitely to me this is a 300 yard gun and very accurate very easy to load you guys watch me load it and shoot it over and over and over again um, Usually takes a few shots on the barrels, get them fouled in until they start shooting good. This is not like your regular muzzle loader where you have to clean it ever, ever, after every shot. To me, I would go to the range, sight this in a couple weeks before your hunting season, and I wouldn't clean it at all. I just keep hunting with it all season. If you shoot it once or ten times, don't clean it. Because if you clean it, you're back to square one starting over with bullet fit and you watch me how i size the bullets a little bit once you get that figured out quit playing with it don't make it harder than it has to be and just go to the range and shoot it until you've got your distances however far you're going to hunt you know if you're going to shoot deer at 400 yards shoot targets at 400 yards before you go deer hunting at that distance but this is what we've got. Thompson Center Encore, Brooks Barrel finished at 26 inches. Muzzle brake didn't kick very hard at all. Um, 65 grains of IMR 4198. Very simple recipe. Large rifle magnum primers. No duplexes, no plastic sabos, no wads under the bullets. Just load it and shoot it. Get you one of these little three piece ramrods. Works really nice when you're done with them. You just fold them up, put them back in your pocket. You can take this to the wood. This whole gun probably weighs, I'm gonna say less than 10 pounds, probably around nine something. I haven't weighed it. I was happy with the scope, very impressed. Clear glass, everything worked pretty good. Um, magnification's nice, it's small, lightweight. I need to put the caps back on here before I forget, but we'll put the caps back on and we're ready to go. So anyway, fellas, 
This is the Thompson Center Encore that you can get from Hankins Custom Rifles if you need one. If you want one, if you're going on a hunt or something, give me a call. Maybe we can get you one out the door. And until next time, guys, I want you to give me the thumbs up on the YouTube videos. Join Hank's Message Board at hanksmessageboard.freeforms.net. And we've got a lot of information on there. We've got pressure traces for these guns so that you know if you want to try a different gunpowder or something. You can go to that message board, look at the pressure traces, see if that powder charge has been traced, what kind of pressure it produced. And you can draw your own conclusions to what's safe and what's not safe in your gun. So really, guys, until the next time, I want to tell you thanks for watching my videos. I appreciate it. Thumbs up to all you guys out there, and we'll catch you the next time around.